Hi, it's Jessica, and welcome to my new series that I'm doing because of the pandemic and I'm bored called Unqualified, where I talk about things that I'm absolutely unqualified to talk about. Um, this is going to be different topics, some that I do know some things about and some that I absolutely don't know anything about. So today is one of those days where I actually don't know anything about what I'm talking about, so I will be joined by my brother Joel. We're going to be talking about different famous artworks, and Joel's an actual artist, so he's actually qualified to talk about what we're going to be talking about today, but I am unqualified. Uh, <laughs> this is my brother Joel. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Joel. <laughs> You're terrible. Uh, I'm Joel. I am a character designer, illustrator of sorts. Uh, <clears throat> I do freelance work for animations and yeah, animation studios sometimes. Uh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, so Joel went to college for art. Yes. I did do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And uh, I did not. I am a science major. I don't know anything about art. He's qualified. Mm -hmm. I'm unqualified. It's been a while. I've taken a couple of art history classes in high school and college, and I've forgotten most of what I learned. Yes. But <laughs> we'll see. Yes. We'll so see. he's an amazing artist. He's a world-renowned artist. No. Does tune therapy. He started an art studio, you know. Sort of, Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what is your, who's your favorite artist? One does not simply ask who your favorite <laughs> artist is. Okay, cut the camera. Cut. <laughs> no. <laughs> who's your favorite? Well, uh, who are I, some artists okay, that you like? Okay, some artists that I admire going back to, the, let's see, um, Leonardo da Vinci is one of my favorites because uh, he's sort of combined like a very technical aspect of design and like creating inventions through like different drawings like he had like early drawings of like helicopters before like that was even a thing and um, yeah so like he he is my favorite in terms of like as a designer and inventor and using art in that sort of outlet and then Pablo Picasso is another one um, because of his use of like shape and just sort of like because he started off as a kid being like some sort of like prodigy as a realist artist and like he was able to like draw and render things very like realistically so young but throughout his life he sort of like untaught himself that and became an abstract artist for the purpose of like, it's more fun. It's kind of like how I view cartooning, like drawing cartoons. They sort of like take people and turn them into like their most basic shapes, but still making it recognizable as a person and, you know, just making it unique. And then um, some other like artists that I enjoy who are like alive now and today there's uh, an illustrator Wait, Picasso's not alive? <clears throat> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding! Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, continue. Okay, there's an uh, illustrator named Chris Sasaki. He's done work for like Pixar and um to Utanko House and he's done like, I really love his illustrations his use of um texture shape and then there's another one very similar in in that sort of style uh John Klassen he's a children's book illustrator I really love his work and how simplified it is but his use of texture is really cool um and then, you know, there's St Steven Silver, who worked on, like, everything from, like, Danny Phantom, Fairly Odd Parents, Kim Possible, um, you know, taught me 
well, it was very like not taught me a lot about like stylization with like clean line work and stuff like that um yeah those are some of my inspirations right now just a couple just to name a few <clears throat> so joel actually knew a lot more than i thought that i was expecting i literally have no idea about any of their personal lives i had to look up a couple of people <laughs> that i don't know so i have my laptop here here's my dog um and i compiled just a few artwork pieces that are very famous and we're gonna you know get canceled by the art community <laughs> no i'm trying not to get canceled <laughs> okay I so still need to find work <laughs> so a game that i like to play is when i'm out in the world i see a lot of stuff and san diego is a really big place for a lot of artwork pieces so Sometimes I'll take pictures and then I send them to Joel and I ask him how much they're worth. <laughs> but we're not doing that today, but it's a fun game I like to play. Ah, we're filming. Oh, we're <laughs> filming. It's live. <laughs> okay, so the first, I have notes because I, I don't know some of the artists. Um, this one is simple, I feel. It is, so the first one we have is Frida Kahlo, mm -hmm. Henry Ford Hospital. Um... What do you think about this particular piece? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's it's cool. The how the fetus is a little freaky, but I I do get the story behind it. Yeah. Um, and the uh, you know it's very like everything sort of like is directed right to her. Like it's I like how. She doesn't just like fill up the whole page with like random stuff like everything's got meaning to it like there's all this like negative space on the bottom and like in the sky too and yeah there's like um this industrial these industrial buildings and stuff in the background and i'm not really sure what that means i'd probably have to like look more into it mm -hmm. but all the surrounding things um they all lead your eye right back to her because there's all these cords connecting it and you know yeah like there's all these like all this symbolism there that you really need to like take the time to like look and figure out what it all means like i know what the the fetus represents but then you got like a snail and like the um pelvic bone um and then there's other stuff there too which i, I but it, like it makes you like want to look at it more and i think like that's the whole point right you want to stay there for a while and look at it and try to dissect it all and like the bed too has you know you have the hospital bed um oh it's cool um yeah it's it really makes you think yeah you know that's what i like about her work it makes you think yeah i'm actually i'm a big fan of frida kahlo's work i mean like i say i like art i appreciate it sometimes i don't always get it but this like it ties a lot back into her her story of when she you know miscarried and then also when she got hurt as a little girl that really left her permanently damaged and i know that having kids was like a really hard thing for her so i actually like her work but you'll see later in renaissance paintings I don't get it. I don't know. I don't get it. We, okay, we go to, when we spend summer vacations together, our parents usually have Joel pick out something and then me pick out something. Um, one time we went to the Getty Museum. That art exhibit just flew right over my head. I don't get any of it. I Joel will sit there, look for probably like a good half an hour, and I'm just looking like I don't get it. I did get in trouble with the security guard once because I accidentally left the flash on the camera, and Joel got really mad uh, too. <laughs> All right, next we have uh, Jackson uh, Pollock. Oh, you get me. oh no! Uh, oh, it went back too far. Jesse Jackson Pollock. I don't remember the name of this. Hold on, I actually have to like go back. They're all the same. <laughs> They're, you don't even know the name. It doesn't make a difference. They all look the same. Uh, <laughs> it's just... Uh, mm, mm. You know what it's called? What? Reflection of the Big Dipper. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts, Jackson Pollock? 
it rich people love that type of work you know put, <laughs> to put it in your little like fancy homes and stuff i uh, i'm gonna get canceled um yeah I, I, it, it's it's splatter painting i don't and like even like the color choices too it's not like there's a lot of black on there and it, uh, covering all the color like at least like put some thought into the, mm -hmm, the color i don't know <laughs> we watched the whole documentary on jackson pollock in my art history class in college and I don't know. This is, I mean, that, there's people that like this type of work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving. Next. Next. So this is Diego Rivera, uh, Symbolic Landscape. Mm hmm Another surrealist painting. Oh, that's, that's cool. I like that. All the rocks or resemble hands there's a lot of hands in here oh shoot there are yeah, i didn't even see hand, that hand hand um penis <laughs> <laughs> loser so like it's cool how he's combining like nature and like all this like imagery within it you know because like, that's hard to do because he's literally turning a rock into like a hand and it looks and, so natural too. yeah I didn't mm -hmm. notice until you pointed it out. Yeah, but um, it's cool. I like, I like the way that he renders things. It's like nice, realistic almost. Like the way he renders is realistic, but like the imagery itself is a little bit more stylized. Um, so that's cool. And also like the vibrant colors that he uses. Um, yeah. I know a little bit about their next one that we have. It's... Andy Warhol. Okay. This is his banana. Pop art. <clears throat> yes, pop art. Um, this was used for apparently he was a band manager for the Velvet Underground. I actually really like the band, and this is this was this piece was used for their album cover. And he was also in the Men in Black. Did you watch the third movie? No. Yeah, I watched the third movie. I don't remember it. Never mind. Yeah, there's some technical parts to it too like it doesn't seem like it's that hard to do but there is some technical aspects of it and like you know sometimes less is more it depends on the era i guess like depending on the era like what's popular is gonna change you know like if someone was trying to make a renaissance painting during what the 60s or 70s when um it just wouldn't be popular at the time you know if that was in and he kind of made it the thing that was in at the time. What What do you think about the fact that he used such mundane objects that people would see every day in their lives, but he made art about it? Like, he made the Campbell's Soup one? Yeah. I don't think it's such a horrible thing. I mean, it does sort of give a new perspective on everyday things. It's no different than, say, like, a cartoonist you know, drawing someone as a cartoon is someone that you see every day, but this is a whole new, like, perspective on that person. I, yeah. I don't know. There's something definitely that needs to be said about the fact that you can show this banana and everybody knows what it is. <laughs> like, if you can show this, it's an image of a banana, but I mean, like, <clears throat> it's so popular and probably one of the most famous mm -hmm. albums ever made it has that on the cover, so it's like... And I, oh. Um, next is kind of, you know, more modern. Basquat. This is called the Entitled School. Basquat? Yeah, apparently. Basquat. I don't know. I have never heard of this person. You haven't? No. To say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. For reference, his stuff sells for hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> I feel like this is the type of artist where they, that they're like, their feelings take control of the artwork. Because there's like a lot of chaos going on. A lot of chaotic paint strokes. Um, 
Yeah, I just feel like it's more like the the meaning is in the feeling. Imagine um, like I find the meaning of it and it's like, oh, it was just it is. It little. could be. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I like I said, it's open ended. Yeah, you know. I don't know. You, like you said, it it's kind of like all over the place, but it definitely has that defined. It's all over the place, but somehow it goes together. And he makes mm -hmm. probably millions of dollars. So I hope you enjoyed this video with my brother Joel, an amazing artist. Please check out his work. You can find him at joelz underscore art on Instagram. And, and at Tune Therapy. And www.joelzmedio.com. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... <clears throat> Thanks for watching, friends, and stay safe through this pandemic in these trying times. Mm -hmm. Goodbye! Bye. <laughs> That's why he only draws in the nude. <laughs> Thanks by Claude Monet. Jean Claude Monet. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> no, I'm keeping that in. Um, <laughs> Jean Claude Monet. <laughs> Jean Claude Monet. <laughs> And then we have Dolly. Yeah, Salvador Dolly. Spider of the evening. There's a boob yeah. in here. I didn't even realize mm -hmm. that.